Hi, I'm Stuart Lynch. This is one of a series of videos I'm doing on things I wish I'd known early on in my Xcode development path. In this video, I'm going to talk about code snippets in Xcode. I'm going to attempt to answer the questions, what are snippets? Why do I need them? How can I use them? How can I create them? And how can I share them, either with others or between my own computers? If you're interested in that, then stick with me. Here we go. What's an Xcode snippet and why do I want to use them? If you say you've never used them, I'd say you're wrong. Every time you type the word import and see this, you're viewing a snippet. When you press the tab on your keyboard, you get a placeholder waiting for you to enter what you want to import. Let's just remove this and see where this came from. If I tap on the little plus library icon and then show the code snippets library, I see on the left a list of existing snippets. If you have been using snippets, you'll see your own defined ones in the first section, and we'll get to this in a little bit. Below this is the Swift section. You can scroll through these and click on one of them, and you'll get the idea. They are simply snippets of code that you can have injected into your code. Let's take a look at the import snippet that we looked at. It's as simple as it gets. It injects the word import followed by the placeholder word module, and that must be replaced by real code. At the bottom, you see the language is Swift. The platform is all, which means it works for iOS, and watchOS, and macOS. And the code completion is triggered when you type the word import, but only if you are at the top level of your file. Let's look at one more. The if statement is a little more complicated because it has two placeholders, condition and code, and it's triggered by the word if, but only if you are inside a function or a method. So how do we create our own snippets? Well, let's first look at what was my first example of creating a code snippet and why I felt I needed it. Take a look at this view controller. I created it by way of example because it's a pretty typical UI kit example of a view controller with a table view, some table view functions, a variable, an IB outlet, and an IB action. As a beginner, I fell into the trap of creating massive view controllers. I don't write my code like this anymore, but I did. When I went back to my old code, I found it hard to figure out what was going on. There's nothing in the code that shows me what each section is. At first, I start started adding plain comments. They didn't do me much good, though, because as my code got even larger, it became more difficult to find things. And the jump bar is no help either, and that's when I discovered pragmas. A pragma mark is an Objective-C terminology, and there's no definite name for it in the Swift programming language, so I'll just call them pragmas. They're a special type of comment that start with a particular keyword, like mark or to do or fix me, and they're all in caps, and they show in the jump bar, and are searchable. So let's switch to an updated version of this file. Notice I have all sorts of these pragmas now. They all are capitalized, like mark and to do, but this mark has a dash, and this one doesn't. The jump bar shows me the difference. My code is now organized, and anytime I use a dash, a line also separates the code sections. The problem is that I always forget the syntax. I still do. Are the words capitalized? Are there spaces between or after the colon? Do I have to have a line before or after, or where is this line? This is a great reason to create a snippet. I don't have to remember. Let's select the entire line. Don't worry about the fact that this one says IB outlet and this one says lifecycle. It's the preceding part that is the same. We'll convert the text into a placeholder. Let's right-click and choose Create Code Snippet. Now, give your snippet a title. Mark with line preceding. Makes sense? Now, give it a description. So I'll just say, creates a pragma mark with line preceding it. Again, that kind of makes sense. In the snippet itself, I need to change the word IB Outlet into a placeholder. This is easy. Simply replace the word with a placeholder word, like title, 
and surround it with left angle bracket pound and then pound right angle bracket. If your snippet requires more than one placeholder, as we saw in the if statement, then do the same for each placeholder, but make sure that you give your placeholder a name that will make sense to you. As for availability, you can choose any one of these, but I want it always available to me in code completion, so I'll just leave it at all scopes. Now you can specify your completion trigger. For this, I'm going to start with SW underscore, and that's how I'll preface all of my Swift code snippets. I'll follow that with mark dash, standing for a mark with an underline, and tap done. Now let's remove one of our existing marks and see if we can replace it with our code snippet. As soon as I start typing SW, code completion shows my snippet as a match so I can tab through the end and have it injected into my code. All I have to do is update the placeholder. Just to finish this off before I show you how you can find some open source snippets and how you can add them to your collection or how you can share snippets between your computers, I want to share with you these three snippets that I have started using in Swift UI. Here's an example of a project with two Swift UI views. When I tap the Present Modal button, the modal view is presented, but my Dismiss button is not working yet. I want to use the Presentation Mode Environment property and assign it to the variable of the same name. Trouble is, I'm old and my memory is failing, so snippets to the rescue. I can type SUI, my prefix for my Swift UI snippets, and I can choose this one. Now my button to dismiss has a fix me pragma mark. I'm going to replace this with another snippet. I just have to type SUI and I'm presented with my Swift UI snippets again and it's this one. Let's jump back to the content view and try our modal again. This time it works. The last snippet is one that I created after watching a video by Brian Voon of Let's Build That App. I'll leave a link to that video in the notes below. And this is on modifying my preview. I'm going to cut out content view and replace it with my SUI preview snippet. Now, your view is just a placeholder, so I'll have to replace it with my real one, content view. Now look at my preview. I have both light and dark. And because my current device selected is an iPhone 11 Pro Max, I see that in the previews, but what if I wanted to see what it looked like as an iPhone 8 Plus? I'll just uncomment this line. And if I'm only interested in dark mode, I can comment out light, or vice versa. If you want to share your snippets or add snippets provided by others, you need to know where to find them. So let me first exit Xcode and return to my Finder. They're located in your home folder library. However, this is hidden by default. Now to get there, you can hold the Option key down on your keyboard and select the Go menu and it'll be an option. But here's another tip for you. I'm a developer and I want the library folder to always be visible. So open your home folder and select View, Show View Options and then click on the Show Library folder, and now it will always be there. So where are my code snippets? They're in the Library, Developer, Xcode, User Data folder. And inside there, you'll see the Code Snippets folder, where all your code snippets reside. Each one has a unique ID, which, by the way, can be changed to whatever you like, as long as it's unique within the folder. And you can open it in a text editor and you'll see that it's simply a plist file that Xcode understands. You can rename these and send them to others for sharing and all they have to do is drop them in their respective code snippets folders. If you go to this website, and I'll provide a link in the notes, you can download a whole collection of Xcode snippets and notice the names are not UUIDs but rather real names. Just download and drop these ones into your Xcode code snippets folder and restart Xcode. 
If you are always logged into your iCloud account on your computers, you can store your code snippets in your iCloud Cloud Drive. Let me open a new Finder window and go to my Cloud Drive. I'm going to open the Documents folder and within there, create a new folder. And this folder will hold my code snippets. So I'm going to give it a folder name that will help me remember where the code snippets should be. So how about lib dev xcode user data. Now I'm just going to drag my code snippets from my user data folder into that folder. Of course now Xcode's not going to know where they are, so I have to make a symbolic link that points to this folder and place that symbolic link in my user data folder. To do this I'm going to use terminal. I'm going to open a new terminal window and type ln-s, which means I want to start to create a symbolic link. I'm going to drag the source code snippets folder onto the terminal window after the ln-s. This leaves a space after that, so now I can drag the user data folder right after that. I'm creating a link from the new snippets folder back to the user data folder, so I'll just press return. This creates the symbolic link and Xcode will be able to find them. Now on any other computer, if I'm logged into iCloud, I should see that new folder in my iCloud drive already synced up. All I need to do is open my home folder library and navigate to the developer Xcode user data folder, delete any code snippet folder that is there, making sure I move any ones I want to keep into my iCloud drive version, and then repeat the terminal action to create a symbolic link of your iCloud version to there. I hope you found this video useful. If so, please give it a thumbs up below and subscribe to my channel. If I get enough positive feedback, I'll continue to build out similar tutorials for Swift developers who have left the starting gate but still need to add to their toolbox. You can check out my YouTube channel to see what other videos I've created. Visit my website to see my iOS app portfolio of apps currently on the App Store. And check out my GitHub repository to see what else I'm up to. Thanks for watching. I'm most active on Twitter, so follow me there for notifications of other Swift-related things that I'm up to.